Yo, what's poppin'? It's the Hyphenate. Welcome back to another episode of the Dummy Podcast. Today's special guest is a crazy dope skater that's been killing it, insane at transition and everything else. But this dude is just doing huge gaps, crazy transition stuff that like I don't even understand how this dude defies physics the way he does. But he's a talented skateboarder, also teaches skateboarding, and he's a big wrestling fan, which we clicked on. And uh, we played video games, Skate 3, had a blast with that. Today's special guest, Zach Moore, a.k.a. Rochi. What's poppin', bro? Thank you, thank you. Hell yeah, man. I'm hyped that you're here. It's been a while, man. I think we skated like uh, quite a few weeks back, but just for yeah. a brief moment, and then before that, it had been quite like a couple, like a month or a couple yeah. months, but yeah, I haven't seen you in a little bit. Where you, where you been at? So I've been a couple spots. I mean, I did take a little trip to Florida. That was pretty epic. Uh, I got to skate the Maitland Banks. Sick. And then um, before that, I, I was up at Woodward. I was with Kanye. Right. Kanye Sester, by the way, yeah. who was on the pod. Really? She was on here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. nice. Yeah, yeah. Kanye's super dope for those who haven't seen the episode. Uh, incredible story. She was born without legs. She acts, models, skates. Uh, she says, no legs, no limits. And uh, she just goes hard at everything she does. Extremely talented and a super fun person. She's super dope. And I met you through her. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, she's definitely she's very inspiring. I yeah. could say Kanye is like, like one of like my idols, to be honest, because like she defies the laws of what you're supposed to do and not do. Yeah, and yeah. like she definitely pushes the limits for what she was given. So I'm yeah. uh, I'm blessed to skate with Kanye, and also blessed to meet you through Kanye. That was amazing. Yeah, man, it's been good vibes. Good yeah. good vibes since I met you. Um, we skated, and then we started talking about business. We started talking about like entrepreneurship and yeah. and and. Uh, positive mindsets wrestling we started talking about a bunch of stuff so um we'll get into some of that stuff in a bit yeah but uh i kind of want to touch a little bit more on your skating right now when i was 14 uh that's actually when i started and uh i used to like ride this motorbike like from my house it was like 10 miles away but it was like one of the ones you strap on a bicycle so it wasn't even like an official motorbike you know what i mean it's just yeah. a conversion kit and i was like so dedicated because like i saw there was only one skate park in the area and um i had went there a couple months previously i had saw it and my mom like dropped me off one time and i was like man i love this place and there's like good energy good vibes good people and uh yeah so when i was like i came back because i was like going back and forth from my dad's to my mom's um I was like, I want to like go there again. And like times are tough. Like she, we like lived in like a five um, bedroom house, but each room was like rented out to a different person. Yeah. And like when I had finally moved up after summer from being with my dad to her, cause that's where I had to be. Um, they told her like, she couldn't have me. Wait, and what? Like, yeah, they, like, they, like, they, they, they were like, her, they wouldn't let you in the house. N yeah, I wasn't allowed to be there. Like she, wasn't, like, she wasn't allowed to have anybody extra but herself in the room. Correct. Her and my stepdad at the time. And I was like, oh, shit. Wait, how is this going to work? You know what I mean? And like, I'm her son and through ups and downs, like she was always going to make it work. So like, I would like sneak in and out. So like the other guests wouldn't see me. But like, Wait, I how old were you? I was 14. Damn. So actually at the time I had. Like I had to be there. I was going to school. Yeah. So Wait, uh, so prior to them going to that house, mm -hmm. you were living with them. Prior to going to that house, I was living with my father. Okay. And okay. to touch up on that topic, we had like a fallen out, got drunk one night. He got into a fight, and uh, it was like unsafe. And I had had you got enough. To fight with somebody else. I got in a fight with my dad. Oh, you guys fought. Yeah. It was like it was a verbal disagreement at first but he was like completely drunk so it was really like complicated Very, he got aggressive yeah he got aggressive like pushed me down the stairs and i was like all right i had enough okay so then at that point they the your mom and stepdad were already at this other place yeah they were already okay, there. so then you you left your dad to go where they were already at yeah okay. or i guess to actually like clarify so i should give you the whole exact story how about that yeah so at the time I was living with my dad and um, when I was with him, like it was working out, but like he worked 24 seven and he never, like he always tried to take care of me, but it was really hard cause he like struggled with alcoholism. Mm. And um, like, you know, I basically took care of myself, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, and my grandma, she would like bring us food or stuff to the house and he lived right on the farm that he worked at, like this horse farm. He had a little house there and like he never really paid bills in his life. So like basically they would, Everything was paid for because he worked for them, so he didn't really have no responsibilities. Right. And you get a little extra pocket change. So uh, they would go through 
pay him and everything and then there'd be a little remaining money and he would like buy me stuff here and there but he wasn't really he was like it's my son he's with me so w- there's really no concern he wouldn't do anything extra so it just got to the point where i was like tired of cleaning up and after my dad and all this yeah. different stuff and it was just it was just a rough end of my ninth grade year you know wow. so this started going downhill right at the end of ninth grade year finally i had um i had a week left of school and one uh i think it was monday night you know he was super drunk and i was like i had disagreement with him and then it got like escalated escalated and they like pushed me down the stairs and stuff and i'm like it hurt (laughs) it definitely hurt (laughs) and uh so i like i just like held all my like anger inside of me and i was like i've had enough of this i'm like i'm gonna call my sister and i'm getting out of here and like i know she lived like 35 minutes away and uh she told me if anything ever happened i could come stay with her so that's exactly what i did i packed all my stuff up i snuck out that night and um my mom i know she's going through a lot of things she's not stable so that's why i didn't call her Mm. um because like i wasn't living with her because it was it wouldn't have worked out you know she could have got me to school properly taking care of me at that current time so when i called my sister she did come pick me up and everything and then i lived with her for a little bit and then that was right towards the end of school finished out the week got a little summer job summer job was going great and then um i started having problems with her boyfriend um, I'd live there. I would work, wake up at 7 a.m., get home from work around 3.30, sometimes 4.30. And I would want to change because across the street, there was another development. They had a nice pool. So I'd always want to come home and like change from my work clothes and get a, go to the pool with my friends. But they would like trust me with a house key, even though I lived there. Wow. And I found it really hard because like, I'm a hardworking teen, never did anything wrong or bad. And, so you were not uh, irresponsible. There was no reason. No reason whatsoever. There was just some like hatred towards me. And uh, he, he was a unique guy at the time. Um, thank goodness she's not with him anymore. But it got we had a falling out because I would have to wait three, four hours once I got home for them to come home and lock the door for me to go in and change. And then it would be dark. So I couldn't go to the pool. And, you know, I was a frustrated teen. So f- that happened for about a month. And then the neighbors the whole time, they saw something was like going on and they were like, dude, what's up? Why are you sitting outside your house so much? And I'm like, I'm locked out. So um, we went ahead like after a week of, you know, the neighbors and like a little talk, I didn't really know them too well, but I slowly learned them. Um, after all these times sitting outside, they invited me to the backyard. You know what I mean? If you want some lemonade or something, we could sit here and chat. Like you have nothing to do. And I was like, yeah. And you know, they gave off good energy. They were good people. So, um, that happened. And then finally they had enough of it. You know, they were like, I'm tired of seeing you outside. You know what I mean? If you want, um, you know, because it was like really toxic at the time. And of I was like arguing back with them because they wouldn't give me a key. And I'm like, I'm working and all this stuff. I, w- I was there and... Hey, how old were you? I was still 14. So you were working and going to school or... or no? School was out. So this was during oh, the summer. This, uh, summer. Okay, that's right. That's working right. a summer job. So then um, as that was going on and the neighbors were fed up with it and... I had gotten in a fight with my sister and her boyfriend that night trying to prove my point that I deserve a key to the house that I stay in and sleep in. Um, even though I'm underage, I'm not going to lose it. No one's going to find it and, you know, break into the house. Yeah. So had a disagreement and then, and then I knew I had the neighbors on my back. They told me if anything happens, you know, you can always come stay here. They had an extra bedroom and everything. Oh, that's super nice of them. Yeah. They had Did no, they have kids or no? No kids. And um, they were really well off. One was a registered nurse and the other was a robot technician. Wow. So like, you know, they had like, I'm still in the trailer park, but this is like an upgraded trailer park compared to what I actually grew up growing in. So, you know, they had like the nicest property out of there with sod, gla- sod grass. So they were like really well off people that could, you know, I could see that if they took on this responsibility, um, they could definitely do it. And that was something I'd always look for as a kid. Like I was more intelligent than most of you know, the kids I went to school with, because I always thought about everything outside the box and observed it before I would get myself into anything. So when I had seen this was a great opportunity and um, we got in that fight, I was like, okay, like, you know, and they knew I had to go to work and they knew my whole schedule. So they told my sister, he, he, he can just come stay here because you guys don't want to give him a key. So then it got really interesting. So I got all my stuff from my sisters and then I lived right next door to my sister so it was really weird tension because she would take her boyfriend's back when he was wrong just because she loved him so then it was like it was really stressful so yeah 
um, to speed it up some, they, they ended up completely gutting the room, like these neighbors, and they gutted the whole entire room. They painted it the colors I wanted it. They remodeled the whole entire thing for me. And um, they would pack my lunch every day, something I never had like growing up for like work. Wow, that was beautiful. Yeah, it was beautiful. It was like a perfect world. I'm like, this is epic. So I had like the best rest of that summer. And uh, that's when I actually got, I always wanted a motorbike. So just like a, a normal bicycle, 16 inch wheels. And then on Amazon, you can buy this like $150 kit to put a little two stroke engine on it and it's completely adaptive. Sick. So I saved up some money for work. I got one of those so I could ride it over to my boys and have fun. And then summer was coming to a near. And this is when I needed to get enrolled in school again. And um, I'd been to like five or six different schools growing up. I was never stable. So when I came to this problem, I was like, oh, how is this going to work? And uh, they were like, well, we want to do everything the right way. You know, we want custody of you. Um, you still have four more years until you're going to be 18. So just so the courts and everything straight, you know what I mean? So we can give you insurance and all these awesome benefits. We want to make sure that you're everything's covered. And I was like, okay, well, it started out good, but then it got to the point where we would have to take my mom to court um, because she wouldn't want to sign over custody to me. And wow. um, that was like a little hard for me because I love my mom. And like growing up, like, you know, when I was nine, we had like a house fire and, you know, lost everything in one night, watched it all burn to the ground. I was always there for her. And I knew, I saw like all the hardships that she was going through. So I would never like yell or blame or take it out on her. Cause it was kind of obvious. Like if I was that adult, like how would I respond to all these things happening? Right. So like when it got to that point and I'm like, yeah, I don't, I don't want to take my mom to court, you know, they're like, but you got to, you got to testify and tell them, you know, that she's unfit. And I'm like, but I know that I don't want to go bash her for it you know they're like well we can't really do anything so you know the the best thing you know you're gonna have to do is probably go back with her because now the court's eyes are open that there's something going on with this kid yeah, and now you. yeah now they want to actually figure out well is he where he's supposed to be you know because right. i've been with my dad under the books my sister under the books you know they want to make sure so i had to kind of move with my mom and I was like, I don't well, know. Well, you didn't have to. You had an option, but you didn't take that other option. I didn't take that other option because uh, I didn't want to make my mom feel worthless, you know? In hindsight, now looking back, do you think you should have done the, the court way so that way you could have oh my life would have been totally different you know like when i turned 16 i would have had a car i would have been in college you know and i would have had a whole different route in life um looking back there could have been pros and cons to it i you know i don't think i would have learned what i learned if i would have chose that going the, so instead of choosing the easy route i chose the hard route and i don't think you know I, I would probably have so many fears to this day. I probably would have never came from what you I came from. You, you wouldn't have experienced all the things you've experienced. Correct. Correct. Because learning it, you know, when I had nothing was really the valuable time. Yeah. So, so you end up going with your mom. Then, yep. then the is, uh, the house, the owners of the house are like, yo, nah, no, he can't be here. Right. So she had, she had previously asked. They said, no. Well, there's really no option. Um, so my mom lived an hour north of where I was staying during the summertime up in a town called Dover um, in Delaware. So we, uh, the, the nice family, they packed my things up. It was a, it was a formal greeting goodbye. It wasn't nothing like, you know, hard feelings or nothing. They understood and they just see my side of you. So I was really grateful for that. So they like, I have like three trash bags worth of clothes and a motorbike. <laughs> so I move it into my mom's house and you know, um, like, how'd you take it over there? They drove me up there. Oh, that's nice. They time. drove me up there. Yeah, it was it was fantastic. Are you still in contact with these people? Uh, I've, I've lost contact. Believe oh. it or not, I want to reach back and tell them how much I'm thankful for everything they have done and, yeah. like, the person that they, like, helped me become, you know, from... Because growing up, when not having a lot all the time, y you only, you know... You know, they, they, like, what they did is was extremely generous. Right, and you're only going to know 
like the things in life, you know, people don't know about owning properties and having nice cars. Yeah, unless they're shown that. So it was kind of cool to see, whoa, there's stability because people just pay their bills. It's not a worry. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like these people, you know, they could put their money in elsewhere, something I could never think about. Yeah. buying jet skis and yeah, all these and, cool and the things. care that they gave you and the care and the love you know what i mean and showing like you can have this you know this is life so they drop me off up there you know i leave the bicycle in the garage no question it could just be one of the roommates um and then i begin like like you know sneaking in and out and like i would keep some things in the room like um food wise other things they'd be in the kitchen my mom would go out there and grab them for me and then this is when it gets really complicated. So my stepdad was fighting for her halftime custody of his um, two children that he had in a previous relationship mm-hmm. and um, two of his daughters. And they were young. I believe the one at the time was um, four and the other one was like two. So w- he didn't end up getting half and half split custody. He ended up getting them on the weekends. Um, or actually... It, w- it would be it would be a little more than the weekends. I think it would be about three days a week. Um, so he would get them, and that was totally cool with the landlord. So I'm um, trying to explain like a 10 by maybe 10 or 15 foot room Which that we shared. Small. Yeah. So my it's small mo- for one person. It's small for one person. So my mom and my stepdad had a bed. I would sleep on the floor with my two sisters when they came for about three days out of the week and share this tight room and sneak to the bathroom and do all this. And then, wow. yeah, it was pretty rough. So then school starts and this is what leads in the skateboarding. So, um, when school started, I got enrolled in the Dover high and this was like insane because i had always grew up into like, um, how would I say it? Like having like, Having different races of friends, I guess you would say. It was very diverse. Very diverse. And then when I went to uh, this high school, Dover, it was like 90% black and the other 5% white and the other 5% mixed. And this is when I became like to see how like um, impacting like the school systems and stuff could be towards like these people. And I'm like, this is wrong. You know what I mean? And like I would have like growing up coming from this country town that I would live in, you know, there's a lot of racist people. And I began to make friends with all these people and never once had a problem. And I was always so confused how everyone would always have a problem with a certain race. But I'm like, these people are cool. You know what I mean? Like, so I, I began to make a lot of, um, colored friends I'd never had before. And it was epic. Like, you know, they showed me a whole different route of different things and different musics and a different persona on life. And, uh, it was very, very different from what I grew up in. And, um, it was a lot harder. You know, I saw a lot of fights in school and stuff like that. But when I went there, I was like this outcast, you know what I mean? Um, at first. And, I was like, you were the minority. I was the minority and uh, I was fine with it, but it was just not what I was really used to. I'm right. very adaptive and I love everybody. So I was like, I got to find something like I love or something to do. Cause when I come home, I can't really go into the house till it's like dark. And, um, all these kids I'm talking in school, like they just want to do drugs and stuff when they leave. And even the white kids, like a lot of them would do the same thing. They would just talk about doing all this bad stuff after school. And I'm like, this wasn't your vibe. Wasn't my vibe. I'm like, what have, what have I gotten into? So I'd remember there was like skate park, like 15 minutes away from there. And, um, I was like, I want to skateboard. Like I played around with one before, never actually understood it could just balance and push and uh i thought it was like 15 15 miles away i think it was and um i was like my mom she can't take me there she can't afford the gas and did stuff. you still have that bike I did. that motorbike i did have that motorbike so I, I was like all right it's time to push this thing to its limits at this point you said you've kind of messed around with a skateboard but you didn't even own one no not at this current time but you're like i want to go to the skate park Yep. And you went and just go went and just bought any random board that you know anything about skateboards at so all? So I had this board, but it had like cruiser wheels on it that I'd acquired from a friend that I think I traded for and it was just always sitting around. So I was like, let me I'll just use this. So I go to the skate park and um it was like at first 
people are like, what are you doing? <laughs> you got like cruiser wheels on this board. And this one guy like came up and, you know, he hooked me up with some other wheels and stuff. And then I was on. And, and then and right here you were held? I was 14. Still, still. 14. Still yeah, 14. so long 14 year old life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was on from then on. Well, once I got the wheels, I loved it. You yeah. know, it was really fun. And then um, I kept going up to the skate park after school and it would take me like 30 40 minutes to get up there and all the people up there this was in a town called Smyrna um 15 miles about from Dover they'd be like you really rode that bike up here and I'm like yeah I had no other choice and they're like you're dedicated and I'm like that's what I want to do so I began to make friends that way when I kind of explained some things, you know, about like my life and stuff that like this, you know, I think skateboarding could help me out. And uh, I'd met this one guy, his name's Brandon Mesa. He's my brother still to this day. And uh, that guy I give a lot of credit to for like the person I've like become. So uh, he, he saw my dedication. I think he was about 22 or 23 at the time. He had just had a baby. Um, and like and he, and he skated and he skated and he did it often every day you know what i mean and it was like one of the big things he loved to do and he like took me under his wing after i told him a couple of things and it was like phenomenal so about a week i went to the skate park probably six six times from when i started going to when i moved up to um the spot with my mom and like life was life was tough but i made it work and uh he'd given me this book like six days into going up to the skate park and seeing him up there meeting with him. And it was uh, by Dr. Joseph Murphy called the powers of your subconscious mind. And like this book changed my life. Like it literally just told you about all the, like the inner powers in your body and the things you can do with them. So I, um, I start reading it cause I have nothing. Like I'm living in this bedroom with my, I'm like, what's the worst? And in my life, I never liked reading. Like I love picture books, school assignments. I would literally skim through. I'd always get by, never failed, always get by. Yeah. And finally I found something that could like change my life, this yeah. book. So I started reading it back to back to back, like, and finished it about a week and a half. And, uh, from then on I was hooked. Whatever I was doing on that board, like I had a goal. Like if yeah. I envision it, I can do it. So I just used that book and ran, like ran with it. I remember the first thing that hooked me. I read out of the book. It was like if you you can attract things. Like if you if you say them enough times and you can see yourself with the picture in your mind, like clear like clearvoyance, um, you 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 can bring it by like yeah. with faith. So I was still optimistic about it, you know, after a little bit, but then. I was like, all right, let me try this. And I realized this couldn't work all the time. I was like, I'm broke. Let me money come my way. Let me find money. Like I would talk about it all day. I'm going to find money. I'm going to find money's going to come to me. It's going to happen. I'm seeing it thinking what I'm going to buy with it, what I'm going to do with it. it. Just made it happen. And, uh, after about two days of saying it, you know, I got off the bus and I'm walking home and there's $10 bill on the ground. And I'm like, all right, this could be a big coincidence, but at the same time, it fueled what I was reading. So I was like, awesome. And I, and immediately I accepted it. This is a possibility. It's not something that you're going to have all the time happen to you. I can't just say this every day and 10 bucks is going to come my way, <laughs> but the idea of dope, it, though. it would, it would be epic. <laughs> yeah. Like money could really grow on trees, but like, yeah, I literally just found it. And I was like, this is all I needed. Like $10, and finding it after preaching about it, you know, I was like, I'm hooked, you know, it's not going to be overnight. Rome wasn't built in a day, but if I keep doing this with everything I'm doing, I will go somewhere one day. And like, it worked. So I just stayed at it. Um, and I would go to the park and he, he taught me like, you know, do all your ollies. And, you know, I was learning. So I'd get the ollie down pat and then he'll be like, do nollie. Yeah. I just believed him. Do nollie. Pretty much training you. Just training me under his wing. And because uh, he saw like the I potential, the potential, and I wouldn't say no. Like yeah. I had nothing to go home to, so I was like, "Why not?" You went all in. Yeah, went all in. So many shinners, so many bruises. Yeah, everything. But it didn't matter to me because like so I'm sure like you progressed pretty quickly then, right? Yes. How many hours are you putting in per day? Per day, um, right now it's it's dropped off a little bit at that current. Well, yeah, at that time. Uh, at that current time, 
I would get home from school at like 3.30 and I'd be home by 8.30. You know what I mean? Every day. And then on the weekends, it was skate weekend. Yeah. Like I woke up 8 a.m., you know, he would pick me up or I... Pretty much like obsessed over skateboarding. Obsessed. That's how I, I was on my first year of skating, uh, especially my first year. My first few years, but the first year especially, like I posted up a video of me skating, like a, like a, a full edit that I did when I was like 12 to mm -hmm. 13. And uh, I posted it up on social media and, and I put like me less than one year skating. And I put like in big text because it was it was like all from like the moment I started skating till like a, almost a year later, and it, it 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 went pretty far on TikTok. And most of the comments were like, "No way, this is in a year. No way, this is in a year. Yeah. This is like th th that that's imp like impossible, or whatever, right?" Because I, I but I progressed super quick. But it was I was so obsessed, and like I put that in. The, and when I replied to one of the people that were like doubting that that was real in less than a year, I was like, "Nah." Every day that I, like, the moment I got home from school until the moment like my legs couldn't go anymore, I was like, till like 9, 10 p.m., I was skating every single weekday. And then on the weekends, all day. And then on in the summer, every day. It yeah. was just like, go, go, go. I was like obsessed. And I was just trying to like do whatever I could. And, and I did progress fast. So, like, you know, you having that, you, it's unfortunate that you kind of had, you know, this, this rough upbringing where you didn't have a lot going on for you in your life but that also contributed to the amount of focus you were able to, so to, to give skateboarding and it's people like that you know what i mean that like shape and are the reasons for people like you that make a brand that you do you know like those people out there in the world that you know like for your instance on tiktok are gonna doubt you yeah you know what i mean and like it's just people that have their own problems in life and their own jealousies and they haven't yeah. understood what to do with it yeah. but like yeah that 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 amount of time and mainly it's about like like for me it might have been a little different than other people other people maybe try stuff a hundred thousand times you know just per se but like i would break down what i'm doing so yeah. like when i would do an ollie i'll be like all right show me the physics let me see the you, math you would study observe break it down so yeah. you can optimize yep like yeah. one plus one equals two that's a fact yeah. if his leg isn't going down and the other one's not going up yeah. and he's not releasing no momentum you know yeah do you, the so equation. You, were, you were pretty analytical about it very to the point that i would say six seven months in of skating focused really hard and having an ollie, I took that ollie everywhere, all the way to like a ten stair. I, and 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 within that same month, like because he, he he was really big on board slides, I was board sliding eight stair handrails seven months into actually skateboarding. Yeah. Because like, yeah, of course, I would get a little bit of fear, and I'd be like, I don't know if I could do that. He'd literally look at me and be like, Dude, it's the same thing as this. With speed, yeah. you're you're gonna hit the rail right here. Stop looking at the top of the rail. You're not yeah. you're not hitting the top of the rail. You're hitting it a little farther down, and you got it. You can ollie that high. You can do it. And yeah. I was like, oh, you just broke the physics down to me. And like, this is so yeah. possible. Let me just try it. And of course, I'd sack, but I'd never doubt him. I'd always be like, he he is right. I see what yeah. he's doing. He does care for me a lot. He's That's not dope gonna to have that uh, that motivation yeah. and the support from somebody to be like now nah, you can do this yeah yeah and uh it, it just he like helped me out tremendously and then you know he would see like and I, I got to the point you know after a couple months started breaking decks learning tricks never focus on anything because decks are hard to come by so i'm not gonna break this thing because i'm mad yeah. i never that was another <laughs> thing i never got mad at like i got frustrated a couple times and he has a really great story it was actually about a nollie back 180 when i was first learning him like two months in and uh I just got like it was like one of the only arguments I had with him ever over a trick, and he would do a nollie back when he'd be like, "Look, do it like this and throw your shoulders like this." I tried it for like thirty minutes, and I was I yelled at him. I was like, "Dude, my shoulders do not go that way. They don't." He was like, "You're lying. Stop lying to yourself." Yeah. And he busted out laughing. And then the next day, I was like, "All right, I guess I gotta prove him wrong. Like I can do this." So I just like focused really hard and um. So at that time, like, you know, a couple of months after living in that one Well, house, not prove them wrong, because if you prove them wrong, that means you wouldn't be able to do it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, like, I, I mean, prove myself wrong. Yeah. Yeah, yeah prove myself <laughs> wrong. That's yeah. what it was. Sorry, I messed that up. But, like, prove myself wrong. Because yeah, yeah, he'd yeah. always point me in the right direction, yeah. never tell me to give up. But that, so what I did to learn that, so after we had, like, trained that night, and I kept trying the Nolly back when he trying it, and then I was like, all right, I'm going to, I'm, 
the next day was the weekend in the morning before we went on a skate trip. I was like, I'm going to practice this some more. So two months after living at that other house with my mom, we eventually got evicted because they found out that I was living there. So where did we go? A mile down the road to a motel. (laughs) We lived in a motel and I think the government was paying for it at the time. Yeah, it wasn't even like, because no one could afford, it's roughly the same as rent if you're going to break it down by night. So then we lived in a motel. It was kind of awesome though. I'm not going to lie because I did have my own bed. The room yeah. came with two beds. I still shared it with my, you know, stepdad. Yeah, yeah but you, you actually had a bed. You were sleeping on the floor. Yep. I was, you know? I moved and up to you a didn't bed. You have to sneak to the bathroom? Nope. Nope. There's a bathroom right in the room. So it, yeah, it, it was definitely an upgrade. An it upgrade. ended up being, you know, an upgrade. It was, a, it was an epic upgrade. So that next morning I woke up and out in the parking lot of the motel, I just kept trying to back when not, you know, I got it. I just like would want. And the motel didn't trip on you. They're like, Yo, no, you're making all this no, it was, it was really ghetto. It was super ghetto. So um, they had like. So you skating was like the least of their worries. Least of my worries. There's people using the rooms a couple rooms away from us for a lot more worse things. <laughs> and just, yeah, it was it was crazy. So that night before he had told me and I wasn't like open up to listen to him. He was like, if you like turn your head, like you're bored and your body's going to follow your head, like whatever direction your shoulders are going to go if you turn yeah. your head. And I'd he- like zoned it out, but I still heard it. That next morning I was like, wait, he said something about this. Boom. Three tries later, learn the trick. Yeah. One of the most valuable tricks that was so simple that like changed the game for skateboarding for me. Because then everything I wanted to do then. Then I you just, could just follow that template pretty much. And be yep. like, okay, just do this, yeah. this, this, and this. What took you out of Delaware and brought you out here to LA? I think it's one of the most insane stories. Are you ready for this one? Yeah. So I was living. So I remained keeping that summer job all the way up until I was... uh well, when I left, actually. So from like 14 to, I don't know. Uh, I left when I was 18. So 14 to 18. For about four years. Four years. And um, so, and how old are you now? Me, I'm 22. So when I go to move out, um, I'm like the job and where I'm currently living are an hour apart. So I'd have to figure out how to get like the money to work out. And um, I would have to... Like, okay, so I made it a couple of times with a couple of rides for the start of this work week in the summer when school was out. And then I was like, this isn't going to work because it's like f- I would have to pay people like 40 bucks st- in gas to get down there. You know what I to mean? To get to where? Down, it, like an hour away. Okay. So they would charge me like 20 a ride and then 20 a ride right. back. I was like, there's no way I'm going to be able to afford this. Right. So there was an older woman. Her name was Angie. And she let me, um, she, or she offered me for the summer i could stay down there and i was familiar with the area because i'd previously lived down stay there. with her i could stay with her in her backyard her grandkids had all grown up she'd built like a little miniature house for them to come stay and she said i could sleep in there and uh, no worries and i was like well thank you so much and how did you know her from the summer job all those four years when i would go back every summer yeah she worked there oh okay. um she drove like this four-wheeler around she was really cool and she was super Italian and she had to be, I wanted to say like 68 and she like took no shit from anyone and I like just smoked stoves all day, worked, was well off, but she was one of those women, women that couldn't be in the house. She needed to do something. She'd do something. And uh, she had nice cars. I mean, she had like... What was the summer job? What was that job? So the job, wow, this is a crazy job. So I would like literally drive a four-wheeler with a cart on the back and I would do trash. I would pick up all these campers' trashes up and down each row and I'd throw it in the back and then take it to a big 30-yard dumpster and then throw all the trash in there. So... um, And she worked there too? Yeah, she actually did the bathhouses. She would drive four wheeler around and like go inspect the back bathhouses and make sure they were good. All the other people did the job right, and um, it was like definitely a rough, tough, and disgusting job. I met a lot of great people though, and uh, like you know, I had to start somewhere in life. And this job it always paid me good. And I was like a teenager. I got to drive a four wheeler around all day long. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Why not? Um, so she offers me the spot. And I go check it out one day and I'm like, this is awesome. So I end up um, moving some of my things down, down there. And when I was like, when I got there, it was awesome. And I was, I just finished high school and I was like, everything was clicking. You know what I mean? Like I'd been skating super hard for the past uh, 
four years at that time. Yep, mm-hmm. past four years. Man, I wish I did the math sooner. Everyone's going <laughs> to think I'm a liar. <laughs> yeah, I should just thought a little harder. Um, so for the past four years, I was skating, doing my thing, progressing. And then here I am working the summer job and like reality hits me. I don't, I don't want to do this for the rest of my life. Yeah. And I'd always get the question throughout high school because I was the only kid in my school with a skateboard that I would carry around. They would always ask me like, you know, what are you doing when you grow up? You know, and nothing took my mind. Like I'd put so much in the skateboarding because it saved me. I was like, I want to skate. Like, yeah. I don't know how I'm going to make it work, but I want to skate. Um, so I'd always tell them, you know, and they're like, where are you going to do that? There's no skating around here. I was like, I'm going to California. Like, you're crazy. And like, ever since third grade, I did a book report on California. So I had to learn everything about it, submit it to the teacher. I'd like always in the back of my mind had this place there through all the ups and downs. I'm living life. I was like, one day I'm going to go to California. I'm going to, well, when I turned 18, reality hit me and I'm working this job consistently and i'm like i i want to go but there's no structure i don't have no friends no family no did you have like a savings no so no savings whatsoever no savings because like the amount of money i was making wasn't enough to really like save like i think i was making like 300 dollars a week so i had like groceries why california because it was one of the places that had like the history of skateboarding behind okay. it. So it was it was fully for skateboarding. Fully for skateboarding. Had the history behind it and mainly like things that stood out in my mind were like all the potential street spots because of the ground right. and stuff and there's elevation. Delaware is the flattest Flat. state in the United States. It's the flattest one. What's the weather like over there? All seasons. So okay, so when it when it snows, it's, uh, there's snow. Yeah. When, it, when it's cold, it's cold. Yep. Yeah. There's all seasons. So, so there. you can't skate all year round like you can mm-hmm. out here. Nope. You will get shut down by the rain. A lot of the times, sleet, snow, um, and just brick conditions. Yeah. Like it will like November, December, January, even up through February and early March, like it'll you just wake up and it's like 30, 40 degrees outside. So then now here you are, zero connections, zero contacts, no extra money. How do you get to California? So I'm um, living for this past week and like I kept like I was still into that book. So like I started using a lot of these like methods through the book. You're like, let me find a plane ticket. Let me find, let me find like, how is this going to work out? And the only thing I kept coming back to the conclusion of is just send it. Like there's no, you know, you, you know, there's nothing here for you, you know? And if you really, really want, like you can come back and work this trash job. So like I hesitated for the first couple of days of the week, like putting all the things in the place to make it sure I go. Like and at this point, you're still staying with the with that lady. Lady in the back, yeah. and I was riding. <laughs> this is even crazier. I was riding a three piece like crank bicycle, like a BMX bike, to this job, five miles. There, five miles back. No, no motor. No motor. Damn. Motor bike ended up breaking down. <laughs> wow. And uh, it like and I had actually had another one but I couldn't get it figured out. Like it like it would it would run the chain would pop off. Like it was not reliable whatsoever. So 5 miles there, 5 miles back and I still love skateboarding. So I would have to go to this nearest skate park and this nearest one was 7 miles away. Damn. So each day um I'm doing like I don't know what's ever like my math's horrible. Remember, <laughs> it's like roughly like 20 miles a day just to live my life work and to be able to go um, have some time to skate. Yeah. For everything I put into it. So it's building up on me. That's exhausting. It's exhausting. And then I'm like not doing all the proper things. Like I need to start packing these things up and, um, send them to family houses just so I could leave some of these things there. And my mom at the time, um, she had, she had had a house, so it worked out like she was renting another place. And, um, but I wasn't living with her because we were, I I needed to work down here and it was too expensive to get back and forth to pay her and other family members to take me to work. So I I just like eventually packed all these things up and it was so hard to do because I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, I have nothing figured out. I'm yeah. sitting here packing all these things up in hopes for, so it was like hard to stay focused to do it. So after right. about three days of doing that, I was at work and I would like just hurt myself randomly. Something I never do. Like I fall all night long skateboarding. Nothing hurts me. I'm a tough kid. Like 
what's going on? I started like hanging my arm, like after throwing some trash in on the dumpster and like dislocated my pinky and all these signs. So like, like not hurting yourself purposely. It not was at like all. you were being careless I was because be you were too distracted. Yeah, I was, I was like really careless or I took it at the sign or at the time as like signs because even then when I did everything, I did it to my fullest capability. And like in four years of working there, I'd never caused any of these injuries nor in skateboarding. So it was like, confusing to me so i was like all right this i need to go i'm yeah. hurting myself now i don't ever do this let me go so i finally that week comes i write a note i put it in the back of my uh, four-wheeler the, the one i used every night because my boss was set in his ways and stuff around there wasn't working out as well so it kind of egged on you know me leaving because like i had long um hair and i look like a little surfer boy and uh these like farmer people you know that run this place and they've been set in their ways their whole life so I would be driving the tractor for doing different jobs there, like on lots and moving stuff around. And he didn't like it because of the way I looked. Now, wow. I grew up on a farm. Regardless of the way I looked, I knew how to operate all this equipment. And it blew their mind that I could do it really well and efficiently. That yeah. they just couldn't stand seeing this little kid, because I'm smaller, long beach hair, driving around all these tractors. Like, it wasn't. So, he, like, stopped me from doing all, like, the little fun things. That so, would, he would, like, discriminate. Yeah, discriminate me. And it like hurt my feelings because I was like those type of things is what would get me through the job. Like not, I didn't just want to pick up trash all day like they wanted me to. It's disgusting. Yeah. yeah. So all these things weren't going well. I ended up packing up all that stuff this one night. Um, I, well, before I started packing up all the things because I did it all in one night because I kept hesitating. I'd wrote that note on that Friday and I put it in the back of this um four-wheeler and when i put it in the back of there because i couldn't confront the guy because i knew he would like doubt me or like just make me feel bad and i wasn't about having yeah, someone you, just, you didn't want to have any negative tension yeah I, and I, it was probably wrong and probably like now i would have go back and probably just face my fears because i didn't like you know yeah. people being mean to me or whatnot yeah, yeah. i just avoid it <laughs> yeah yeah so uh i did that and then that friday i had got my check and Went to the bank, cashed it. Bank's about a mile away from the work. Um, and did all this on my bicycle. Wow. And uh, I, I left there. And I was like, all right, it's my final time there. And I go home and I start packing. And after I received the money, I had told my sister, because we're like on all right terms now. Her and her boyfriend had broke up, but there's nothing really she can do for me. I was like, can you buy me a plane ticket? Um, because I had no credit or debit cards or anything. I was like, can you buy me a plane ticket? I'll give you the cash. I got some stuff lined up in California for me when I get out there. And you didn't. Complete lie. Yeah. Like just so that uh, like, way, like, that way they wouldn't push back. They on wouldn't you push leaving. back, and um, they would feel relatively safe about it, knowing because they they I was different. Like I had, you know, I was getting sponsors and stuff back home. Like it was stuff my family had never saw, so they thought you know I had potential in doing something. So if I just said some stuff, they would just agree. So right. I basically kind of left it along that lines. I didn't yeah. make up a crazy story. I was just like, yeah, I have some stuff lined up for skating. I gotta get out there. Yeah. So give her all my money, and um, they're like, you're gonna just move there i'm like yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna stay out there for a little bit like i have some stuff figured out so took all that stuff my sister picked me up that night went to my mom's house dropped off most of my stuff told her my goodbyes and bought a same day plane ticket for that night and um i headed up to philadelphia the nearest airport and said my goodbyes to my sister and took a flight zero plan zero plan nothing where did you go so shout out to this lady on this airplane she's a complete og and a legend if she didn't speak up i don't know where i would be right now so i'm flying now remind you like this is my first ever flight in my life like i'd never flown and before. it was going to lax no plan of where you zero. would go after walking zero. out I sh like if swearing helps like zero like wow. zero i don't know like i could put it on, put it on my mama on my dead grandma <laughs> like like i'm that serious like nothing so but, you're on the plane you're talking to this other lady yeah so um i'm riding and they flip open and it's all perfect timing because i'm telling you this book changed my life so open up the window and the dude's like it's like 73 degrees out we're gonna be landing in lax in about 15 minutes and i'm like looking outside and i'm like whoa la is humongous i come from a small town i thought like la is gonna be okay it's gonna be a little bigger than my town of course you know but like 
we're driving. I think we're coming up the coast and by like um, driving or flying, flying, flying. Oh. Why did I say drive? We're we're flying up the coast. I'm like looking over like San Diego area down at the mountains and stuff, and like 15 minutes of this. Like I thought that's what LA looks like. It can't be this all the way up there. Like you know the mountains, the houses, and you know the palm trees and all these wonderful things. So we're going, we're going, and I'm like now I'm getting worried. Cause I'd set this all forth. Like I can, I can figure out a town. Come on, drive around all my towns on my bike or this or that. Like <laughs> I, I got good memory. I'm like, what did I get myself into? So lady looks over at me and she was like, so where are you going today? And uh, I'm like, I don't know. I'm, I'm figuring that out right now. She's like, what do you mean you don't know? I'm like, I don't know. And then I have my skateboard under the seat and she's like, um, are you, you going to Venice? I see you got like a skateboard. Like that's where skateboarding originated. Like, have you ever seen the Lords of Dogtown? And this is like insane because I'd never seen the Lords of Dogtown. Um, oh, the movie. The movie. Which, which is actually a really and good movie. And it was movie. like, it's a really good movie. Yeah. I've, I've seen it since. And uh, she kind of like, like this is me. Cause she's like, you're a skater and you've never. And I mean, this is like an older 48 year old woman, yeah. you know, she's like, you've never seen it. Like, come on, you're a skater. And I'm like, I know. Like I, People have told me I should see it. And um, she was like, well, I hope you get to check out Venice. It'll be nice. And that's what changed the game. So right there when she said that, I was like, yeah, I think I'm going to do that. Like I, I kept giving her the uh, the energy as if I was okay. Like I actually had some things figured out, but I didn't. So I kind of just like, you know, so she wasn't actually now worried about me. Right, like this right, kid's right. going nowhere. Um, she probably thought I was like joking or something. So she tells me that we have service like we're flying super low so i just now got service on my phone i look at the map and i see venice is relatively close like a couple miles away from lax i'm like oh this is perfect like okay a little bit more than a couple miles but yeah, six miles six miles yeah yeah so it wasn't so you it. skated it so i skated it and then i and, like and this is daytime you land daytime yeah i land daytime so i get a little confused at first that night would be rough yeah so I get a, like when I get out of the airport, I ended up like on top of overpass. I was like looking around. I was completely confused. I'd never been in a city like this before, like right, Philadelphia, yeah. but it's flat ground, everything, you know, this is like two story roadways and this and that. And I'm like, what's going on? So, um, I had started pushing a little bit. Then I saw a bus stop and this is like, this is where the story goes crazy. Like, you know, you don't have to believe me, but you know, I know what, like I went through and this was crazy. So I'm going and, um. I'm not cared about how much money I have. Remember, I didn't make that much from that job. I roughly had enough to buy the one-way plane ticket for a couple hundred dollars. And I think I had like 40 or $50 left over, but I kept buying food in the airport and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, and, that, and the airport food is expensive. Expensive. So like if I started out with like 40 or $50, I'm not really cared about my money because I already know I put everything into this. Like I just have like a couple remaining pocket change, maybe like $10, $15. I don't even... No, if that, but anyways, I got on this bus and I would like use the money, you know, so I got like on the bus and I kept getting like confused because I didn't want to go to the wrong spot. So I would get on the bus and then get off somewhere else and then like take another bus and ask a million people, am I going the right way? Am I doing the right thing? So eventually I got it figured out and, um, I ended up in like Venice down Washington Boulevard, um, and got off the bus there and then the boardwalk. So it was like insane. And like, I looked around, like I'm pushing, like, cause I'm asking people like Venice is that way, right? Like the skate park and I'm looking at my map, but I'm not really trusting it because there's so many things. Like it's just, yeah, it was, yeah, it was yeah. a like, lot to take in that first for day. For sure. It's overwhelming coming from where you came from. Yeah. Like it's, it's an overload. Yeah. And like, I'm walking down and I'm seeing like this still, I live by this to this day, like for places like LA, which is crazy. It's like, as I'm going down the boardwalk, I'm like, whoa, this is crazy. I've never seen like homeless people like this before you know what i mean yeah. people that are crazy like like quote unquote tweaking and stuff like that i've never yeah, no, they're, they're a bunch of whack jobs yeah LA. and i've never yeah. seen like something like that up close and people just ignoring it and stuff venice is full of madness yes and it's just like uh, just walk all right just another day right yeah so i'm going down and uh i'm like okay and i'm starting to exit off the lifts because i'm getting a little nervous now because everything i put into this i'm like I have nowhere to sleep and all this stuff. And I'm not really worried about it. So I'm going and I see a couple like these different types of people. I see tourists. I see those like whack jobs. And then um, I see like rich people. You know what I mean? Yeah. And there's literally three types of people and I can see them all in my eyes and I start exiting off what I am and who I'm going to be. I'm like, <laughs> all right, I'm not going to be that whack job. I like, no, I'm not going to be a whack job. Um, I'm not going to be a tourist because I want to live here. Like this is where skateboarding lives the hardest, I believe. Um, and then I'm like, 
all right, so I got to make money. I want to be rich. I want to have, you know, wealth and not just in money form, but just being a valuable person. Yeah, you you want to not struggle. I want to not struggle. Something I had only knew about growing up. So I was like, this is going to be a challenge. So I'm making my way to the skate park. I'm making my way to the skate park. I get to the skate park. Oh, do you have everything, a luggage? Do you have a backpack? Nope, like, everything's in a book bag. I literally moved out there with a book bag on my back. Book wow. bag and a skateboard. How many changes of clothes did you have? Ooh, about like five outfits. Wow. You know what I mean? Like five pants, five shirts, five underwear, five socks. You know what yeah. I mean? And I would like go to the laundry mat and everything. So I make it to the skate park. And like at the time, I was like careless kid. I was like, first thing I want to do, and try some, like I heard marijuana's legal out here. I want to try some marijuana. <laughs> like literally, it was one of the most bizarre things. So I'm like, I want to try it. Okay. Like, you know, and then I'm, I'm going to skate. So as I'm going to the skate park, Someone's like, yeah, just go up there to that store. And because I'm asking everyone questions like, where can I get some papers? You know what I mean? He was like, well, if you buy the papers and I'll put the other stuff in there. I'm like, okay, so be it. So I'm going up and it's like literally my last five bucks. And and I'm realizing it at this time I have to buy papers. And I'm like, I shouldn't be doing this. this is so <laughs> careless. Like, why am I even doing this? Um, but I'm like trust the process like wow. I'm, I'm trust the process That's crazy i bro. go into this shop i kid you not i spend my last five bucks on some raw papers and i'm turned around i'm walking out headed back to the skate park i ain't even skated yet dude says hey come here and i'm like me and he was like no one else is in here you so i turned back around and he looks at me in the eye and he says would you like a job and i'm like what I look around, super speechless. You, you didn't, I, I you, like, you, I take my book bag off my back. I'm like, this book bag, it has everything like I, I, I ever like, you know, I was gonna need out here. Like, this is all I have. This is all I brought. Like, I just moved here. I'm not lying. And uh, he was like, well, came to the right spot, just wow. like that, just like that. He was like, and you didn't even ask or nothing. Didn't ask her nothing. I swear, I swear, I didn't ask her anything. So. I look at him and he's like, all right, so I already know what you're about to do. And he starts chuckling. He's like, go out there, skate for 30 minutes, come back and I'll train you. And I'm like, really? And he was like, yeah. So um, I then asked him, I was like, can I just leave my book bag here? You know, so I have to have it. Yeah, no problem. Sure enough. I go out there. I skate for 30 minutes, have some fun. I come back. And the first time I ever skated with a crowd of people, because Venice has a rail that's just always full during the summer times. And, uh, that was completely new to me. And, um, I go out there, have the time of my life for 30 minutes. And I go back there and I train until eight at night. And this is roughly like by the time I was finished, like, or by the time I got from the landing it was about one one thirty in the afternoon to eight i trained i worked i trained i oversaw him played music in the shop had a good time and he paid me at the end of the night and wow. the, this is like when it was like a little like okay what am i supposed to do so he pays me oh, like 50 or 60 bucks dude has showed me love all day long by taking care of me and i was so thankful and he was like so what are you gonna do tonight about sleeping and i'm like i don't know i'm gonna figure it out he was like well there's some hostels and i'd never heard the word hostel before until i came out here I only heard hotel or motel yeah he was like so there's some hostels you know you can go and you could stay for the night like i'm pretty sure i gave you enough money um if not just check and uh, i could give you some more well i go to the hostel and um like you need a debit card on file and blah 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 blah. I'm like, oh, this is not gonna work. And uh, he like, he'd put everything into this, but he's still holding back some because you know he wants to make sure he can trust me. Who's he? The, uh, this guy's name's Ali. Um, no, was, but, but like is Ali the guy was the, the, shop o- or the, the owner the of the shop, the oh, owner okay, of the okay. shop. So he's put everything into me. You know what I mean? Trusting me by just giving me a random job, like right on the spot, taking yeah. care of me, paying me for training, just putting, hoping he's believing my story, which was absolutely true. Um, cause you know, to me, this was like a miracle or yeah. whatever you could say. And, uh, to him, he was probably like, perfect. You know, like I got a, a good worker, you know, and et cetera. So at the end of the night, I give him a call. And the reason I say that about like, he still holds some strings back is because he's like, if you have any problems, give me a call. So I give him a call and he was like, yeah, you can come over, but you like, you can sleep downstairs in the guest lobby. There's like some couches there. The guest lobby of, of where? Of his, um, condo in Marina del Rey. Oh, wow. So, um, and the reason, like I was saying about the strings is because he didnn't just let me stay in his house, you know, cause he won't like, doesn't know if I'm going to steal or something yeah, yeah. bad. You know what I mean? He just took in some kid from the street first night. Um, and he was like, you could stay down there. Well, that didn't work out. Um, about like two 30 in the morning, I got kicked out because they thought I was a drunk passed out guest. <laughs> wait, wait, by who? 
the the security of the building. He, oh. he, he didn't know because, you know, you know how condos are. There's multiple floors and rooms. You know, there's one yeah. guest lobby. So uh, he didn't know. And I wasn't going to call him at 2.30 in the morning and let him know. I just got kicked out. And of course, I wasn't drunk or anything, but I was wow. sleeping where I wasn't supposed to. These are a bunch yeah, of rich yeah, yeah, people. Yeah. So uh, what do I do? I go outside and like a block away, I find this like generator in the cut and it was putting off heat. <laughs> Green generator. I put my book bag down and I put my hoodie on and I like, put all my sleeves up my head and my thing and i go to sleep i wake up and go to work and i tell him what happened he's like oh man we gotta figure this out but um i didn't want to like burn the bridge so i wasn't gonna make this burden his problem so for literally it's not his his like a week yeah it's not his responsibility he's doing so much for me i don't want to like take so much that he he doesn't want to give anything so he's paying me each day understanding what i'm going through i'm having enough to get money for about a week i'm sleeping outside i choose the same exact spot because like i said i don't want to be a wacko i'm not going to go ask these dudes in tents where the best spot to sleep is they're probably going to stay right here so i just stay to that one generator spot and i'm like i'm 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 living. I'm loving it. First week, so I saved some money. I got some money saved. Second week comes around, and I got tired of sleeping outside. I was getting cold. Uh, so he lives in this one condo unit in Marina Del Rey. They're building other ones around it, and like you know, there's different stages of condos like being done. One's framed, the other ones like now being furnished, you know, etc. So I was like, I'm gonna go find somewhere to sleep. So I find my way into this one condo, go up the stairs. I'm like one of these rooms has to be open. Come on. I checked a couple and then worked. Finally, I found this one and I was like, no way. So I slept in this condo under the radar for about a week and a half, two weeks while I was saving this money. And I would like put stuff behind the door. So I knew if someone had come in this house and it was completely like everything inside except couches and beds, you know, like running water, bathroom, you sink, refrigerator, everything. Wow. And it, so was, it was just empty. It was empty. They they were probably about to show it soon at oh. some point, um, but it was empty. And I guess one of the workers had left it unlocked and it was brand new. So I would sleep in the master bedroom, still currently on my book bag as my pillow and then hoodie. And now I could charge my phone. Like it was awesome. So I did that. Well, one day I had one home that night and the door was locked. I'm like, oh no. And I'd already knew under the radar. I think I had like a couple of shirts I took out of my bag just to fit some other things in there. So I didn't really lose a lot of things, like a couple materials. And I came back to him like, all right, I'm really screwed now. Because I told him throughout the time what was going on. And he like thought it was funny. And he was like, oh, it's working for you. So, you know, you're good. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, all right, I'm really screwed tonight. Like when I came to work that, that morning, I was like, last night I had to sleep outside again. They locked me out. Um, I wasn't supposed to be there. So... He had came in contact and told me that he had met a guy a couple of days before who goes by the Venice Van Lord and he owns a bunch of vans and he rents them out to people to sleep in, pass their wow. buyers, et cetera. I think it was like two fifty, three hundred dollars a month. And I was like, perfect. Tell him I want to meet him. So I meet the guy during the day because he lives around Venice, sets everything up, gives me the key to the van. He has like steering lock and other things on it so people don't steal his vehicle. So the, the van's parked. The van's parked. It's not for he, driving. It's not for driving. He, Just dri- to he live drives it. it to move it for street sweeping and that's it. But you don't drive it. He drives the van. Wow, and, that's crazy. Yeah. He's been on the news a couple of times. It's pretty It's pretty gnarly. So I stayed in, uh, in a van and I kept myself. And like, you know, of course... Struggles in the morning. We're getting up using the restroom. Um, a couple of funny stories about that too. Um, like one morning, for instance, I woke up and I was using this Porter John that was across from the um, van where I was sleeping in, and they were doing a construction job. And I'm in there using the bathroom when I hear the people they're coming in to open up and start for work. The first one I hear is like, "I gotta use the bathroom." And I'm like, "Oh shit!" Like I'm in here. So yeah, he comes over and then. He like opens the door because it's like locked and I'm trying not to say anything. I just hope he doesn't do anything. Finally, he like breaks it open. He sees me shit like sitting there and then he just slams the door so loud. <laughs> so I finally get up and get out of it. You know what I mean? I'm sorry. I was like, just got to use the restroom. And the whole time I'm not like, as people see me going through this, they're not, they're kind of confused. Cause like, you know, I don't look like I'm at the current time, you know, poor or homeless or anything. Like I had money saved. I was eating air one every night, which is What's air one. It's like a top. It's like higher than whole foods. It was like some really oh, shit. expensive food. I was making insane money, 
You know what I mean? And I was eating good. I was healthy. I was going to the gym every morning to work out and shower. Um, I was going to Ross every morning from the van to buy new clothes and acquire them. And uh, I was so busy with working, working 8.30 in the morning to sometimes 9.30 at night, get a session when I got done or before in the a.m. So um, I was like, wouldn't do laundry sometimes. So for like a couple weeks on end, I would just go and buy new clothes in the a.m., a new outfit every day. And uh, it, it was going amazing. And I just kept doing that. And I saved up a decent amount of money doing all that, even through doing all that. Cause I was making thousands of dollars a week. Wow. Like, like, like crazy money because not only is minimum wage higher, you know, I'm um, selling things and there's commission and, you know, oh, just like the guy Brandon did with skateboarding, this guy's actually doing with me. Unlike any of these other store workers, he's telling me how to profile. He's teaching me how to hustle. Wow. You know what I mean? How to add in deals and give people some things for free to make more money. So I'm acquiring a whole new skill on how to actually talk. Wow. And still to this day that going through that phase has helped me talk to people, even like people like you or like right now like i had before i was always shy i would never really talk it's in myself you know now i'm not afraid to walk down the street and talk to anyone yeah you know what i mean i've sold thousands and thousands of dollars worth of things mm -hmm. you know probably in the upwards of a couple hundred thousand dollars um just from this amazing profile giving these people a nice charm smile deals etc so making all the money i'm saving the money and then um yeah that eventually just like i had was tired of living in the van and I met this girl and uh, she had one day followed me home from the park and I didn't know it and she found out where I was sleeping in this van and I was like so so you were like you were dating this chick yeah I, well, I was like talking to her but you know I didn't really give her my whole scoop because I was sleeping in a van yeah yeah yeah, yeah I didn't yeah, want, her want her to her know, know everything so I uh, go about it and she like without me knowing, follows me home from this park, like from a distance, finds out where I'm staying. And she, so, so what, like, had she asked like, oh, where do you live or whatever? Yeah, and yeah. I just told her I live like up there. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like I live over there on Wait, that. So like, like you met her at the skate park? Or? Yeah, we had like, we had hit it off like relatively really so, fast. So, so you met her at the skate park. Yep. And then, uh, did she live around there or like, like was she She had just moved from Florida to California. She was renting a room out. Um, Right, right on the beach, actually. Okay, okay. She was renting a room out, and uh, she had just, you know, she wanted to move to California. She took a trip there. She gotcha. fell in love with so it. So then she finds out that you live in this van, and then what happened? She starts leaving me notes. She First, I go back, and there's a book. I'm like, oh, my gosh. I've never had this problem before. Wait, wait, wait. wait. She followed you, and you didn't know she followed didn't you? Didn't know Okay, it. so she didn't confront you or say, like, anything. She just, she just she followed, followed me. out after. What had happened was I had, like, I... I was focused. I was really focused. I didn't want no distractions. You know, even though I like this girl, I, I didn't want a relationship. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I didn't even want to spend time even talking or really hanging out too much. I wanted to focus on everything yeah, I yeah, you had to do. You know, so yourself. she had like, you know, loved me a lot. And I like blocked her and everything. And I was like, I just, you know what I mean? And there was no hard feelings. It was just like, she fell head over heels over me. And at the time I just wanted to like skate and, you know, figure out my journey. So she follows me back on those weirdest terms and like I guess she puts a book in my van the windows cracked and I come back to it um so that first time she followed me back and she figured out where I live so another time you know she just put this book in my van and um I'm like where did this come from I'm now like you didn't know it was her at the sketched time. out I'm like I did not yeah she didn't say what anything. was the book the book was uh the the monk who sold his Ferrari wow a really powerful book and so she leaves the, the book in there. How old is she? She is one year older than me. Okay, okay. So, yeah. And then, so she leaves it in there, and I'm like, okay, this is sketching me out. And a couple of days later, because I hadn't reached out to her, and I think she had tried to text me to let me know she did that, but I, I didn't get it. Um, she leaves me this note, and I'm like, oh, my God. Like, this... Uh, it takes me back to like elementary school, like slide of notes, like kind of hit my what feelings. Was so it was just about how much she liked me and she wanted to figure some things out. And you know what I mean? That um, she is like getting a place, like a block. And, and, and did she skate? Yeah, she skated at the time. You know, she loved it, had some fun with it. And she was like, I'm getting a place a block away from here, like my own spot. You know what I mean? Front backyard, nice house. I want you to come live with me. And I like, debated it at first, but then I was like, it might be nice. 
it might be nice. So sure enough, like, you know, I talked to her, I'm like, well, we could figure it out. You know, if you really, you, cause she was saying she got the house, I come move in with her and we could just have a good little life. I was like, all right, let's, let's try it. So I like moved everything out of my van and, you know, I still been with this woman since that day. And that was, um, wait, you live with her still? Yeah. We're together. We're together. Oh, she's your girl. Yep. She's my girlfriend. Oh, what? Yep. That's crazy. Yep. We have a like, good life. We got three dogs and it's it's epic like i definitely love it that's wild so we've been together uh, three years now. three years yep three wow. years. and uh it's it's been awesome we've had our ups and downs but you know as, we, as we all make relationships it work. do yeah and she uh at that time you know she believed in me she knew i really had like no income um so it was really skateboarding and um she helped Helped my courage. I actually at that time got into commercial acting. Oh wow! And that was amazing. I got to like work with like Stacy Peralta. Wow, um, that's dope. For a commercial, yeah, for the Olympics. But then COVID came, so they had to postpone the Olympics. Yeah. But I still got good ads on that one and good revenue. Like good money came in off that. And then um, I did another big one with Apple um, for the iPhone. Was it 12 at the time? iPhone 12. Sick. That was really really cool. Nintendo. I've done I've done a decent amount of like big commercials that oh, were yeah, epic. Man. You know, it was like, once again the first time in my life I'd seen numbers come in like that. When you get a check from them, you're yeah. like, "Whoa!" Like yeah. you know, I just did a little bit of work, and the whole time they catered me. Like that yeah. is something that is so interesting about that whole, um, like work field. You know, right. the whole time you get catered, you need gum, this and that, lunch, and yep. you know they're just taking care of you because they want you at your highest capacity they want <laughs> yeah, you to be facts, able to facts. do your best so yeah I, I got into that and uh we've been together and it's it's been amazing that's you know sick I mean? man so now i know you right I, now you're sponsored by arbor yes i'm sponsored by arbor um, that just happened recently that just happened like this year yeah that happened this year but previously i had um like a couple clothing companies a couple energy drinks smaller companies nothing major um I had a sponsor to take it back a little, like, um, one of my first sponsors was duck fat skateboards and uh, I skated for them. And then when I moved to the West coast, things kind of like, you know, I didn't really get some packages, things kind of yeah. like faded away from them. And, um, so is Arbor kind of like your first major, yeah, like, Arbor's, sponsor? Arbor's my first major, like actual sponsor. Sick. Shout out to them guys. I love them. And, uh, have you been working on any parts or you, what are you, what are you working on right now? Skate wise? Yeah. So right now, um, I've been doing a lot of like. They're, they're opening up. That's what's so interesting about Arbor. They're they're taking on a whole new wave, you know, from what they have been doing in the past. And they're putting a lot towards the team. And that's something I'd never seen before in skating. Yeah. Like a lot of my other sponsors, they just give you stuff, you know, so I'm doing... Um, like photo shoots and ads for Arbor and then um, we're going to contest and stuff like that now. And then um, trying to put together right now a street part, trying to find like... Sick. That's something else they showed me before. Like I always thought, you know, skaters and like teams, they just like go out together. That doesn't always happen. You know what I mean? Because if this person crushes the spot and, you know, you just get like this trick on it, like it's not going to work. They're going to go with the one. So really right. how a spot thing is, is actually you go with your filmer and you go get the trick. You know yeah. what I mean? You bring the footage back to them. They pay the filmer and, um, that there's your part you know what i mean yeah. it's not always like a whole i always thought it was just like a whole team thing all the time but then it makes sense because if they're going to run a video and this dude just you don't want all the team members having the same spots yeah like someone just like kick flip black slips this like 12 stale rail and then you know you just back lip it like they're gonna go with the other yeah. one so they don't really want that happening that's why they don't do that so um basically right now i'm trying to find a good filmer um to get this part up and going um because that's one of the only things i don't have i have phenomenal skating but i don't have a part and yeah. mainly i like i don't like placing blame but to be honest it's hard to find someone that i click with yeah um and that like really has those qualities such as like brandon or you know the guy ali who were there for me that want to help train me and get me going yeah because anytime someone tells me hey we're going here we're doing this we're going yeah. You know, and that's, I've showed that a couple of times with Arbor when we went to spots, like I just put it down and go for it and, you yeah. know, always end up with more than I came with. That's awesome. Yeah. Doing phenomenal things. So like, so have you, have you filmed anything yet or you haven't started yet? Nope. We haven't, we haven't got okay. it going. Haven't okay. got it going. Um, like, 
we've done a couple of things for Arbor. Right, I don't right, know, right. I don't we, know. We what, haven't started filming the part. The part. Gotcha. No. So that's that's about a kickoff. Um, I've got a couple people who I think I trust. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I've heard stories along the grapevine of how people don't get their footage back for three yeah, years yeah, yeah. and all this. So I want to make sure none of that happens. And I yeah. uh, just want to kind of go into I it. Got, I got some contacts. I'll, I'll connect you after the pod. Yeah, that would be epic. Yeah. I'd appreciate that. And then you also teach skateboarding. I do. I uh, I do it limited. You know what I mean? Um, because I'm still teaching myself. I right, do right. You're still on, you're still on your grind. Yeah. So so um to to get by and to have a little extra pocket change. You know what I mean? I'll teach some lessons. Yeah. And I'm thankful for the people that I work with. Um, there's this one kid. He's up and coming. His name's Fox Doan. He's phenomenal. Fox Doan. Doan. Yeah. D O A N. Um. He's a younger ripper. He's he's like nine and he's putting on. You know what Going I mean? Hard. Like, yeah, yeah. He he goes hard and like he we click. You know, and um, so he was one of my uh, first kids I really taught like with him and you know his mom like trust me a lot and we'll go um, for his like little amateur competitions. You know, we'll go there. I'll plan out his line and stuff for him. So really good family over there. And uh, she had connected me with the uh, Groanings, which was um, amazing because um, they really help and take care of me a lot. That's awesome. So you know who the Groanings are? Yeah, the, the creators of Simpsons. Yeah, right? Like they're, they're phenomenal family. And to be around like people like that, like once again, like I'm still living a dream. Like yeah. these are people that own multiple properties and the property that I teach at, they're like, what do you think our kid will need to succeed i'm like a mini ramp if i had a mini ramp growing up in my yard it would have changed the game I'm like okay so just write me a check and i get them a mini ramp we install it in the backyard wow and they invite me over we have lunch and you know have dinner with them and they're just amazing people and that's just awesome always that thing in the back of my head one day i'm gonna figure out how the simpsons predict everything <laughs> so i i asked matt and like he he laughs at me like well he laughs with me but he's like haha uh, time traveler. That's what I am. <laughs> so he leaves me at All that. Right, so, okay, so it's official from Matt Groening himself. He's a time traveler. He's just a time traveler. You know, <laughs> even with the most recent Queen Elizabeth, like he, <laughs> right? he, strikes, he strikes again. <laughs> so apparently these uh, upcoming episodes are, I think it's the seasons soon are going to reveal how they actually do it. Oh wow! Yeah, so we'll we'll see with that, and um, that's funny. But yeah, it started out with uh, one of his kids, and then it became two, and then it became three, and then four, and now all the kids. Like I just teach them. That's amazing. So we, we get that going. And wow, they're phenomenal. They're, they're like each one is just like a, a different type of genius of his children. You wow. know, the one is like just really good at this the other one's like fearless the other one, and it's just like these kids are well put together yeah. I, I love them a lot you know all the, all the kids i teach so i just teach his family and then i teach um fox stone you know what i mean so i keep it small because yeah. i'm still doing yeah, my own you, thing. you still got to make time for you to skate right and at the same time it's it's not like pointless like i'm giving these kids something that was given to me and um showing them the ropes and the ways so hopefully you know they do something with it if not it could even make them a better person. They, yeah, I mean, they go on the life I, with no I fear. I don't skate. I never took skateboarding professionally, but what I gained from skateboarding, what it taught me, what it instilled in me, were a lot of great and useful tools that I use to this day. So, Correct. Yeah, I mean, even if they don't pursue skateboarding as a career, like these moments, these times that they're having right now, this fun that they're enjoying uh, with you and and just with themselves on the skateboard, like that's going to be something that they're going to hold on to forever. Yeah. Mainly that fear thing. Like I, yeah. had, I had a chance in one of do like a short little series or short little show part, um, with this woman named Dr. Judy Ho and a couple other people alongside, like with the, uh, Will Smith for his birthday. And it was about like, and so it was his birthday. He's filming this thing. And I didn't understand how skateboarding was involved, but then he had like, a tremendous amount of respect for him because the idea behind skateboarding is like in life if you know the same things and the tools we use to like never be told no mm -hmm. like if there's like you try and kick flip a stair set you know what i mean so many times you keep falling like you're gonna get back up until you land it that's a skater yeah so like it's the, the resilience the resilience it's the same thing with these people that go to college and they come out of college with all these degrees and they go the first two places and they deny them they're like no we're good we don't need you and they're like i just put in all this work why am i not getting this they're not 
focus. They got to go harder. They got to go to six more spots. Tell them yep. no again. Yep. Seven, eight, Keep going. Nine. Yep. And you never stop. So it was cool to actually learn that through someone like Will Smith. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like with, with what he had launched for this little, I don't even know what you would call it, but this little show that we kind of did and it was phenomenal so I, I like really got that understanding with them you know in life and you, yeah. you want something you can have it you better focus and stay to it and let me tell you no yes no yes you know what i yeah. mean you fall down you better get back up so it's really it's really important to have those tools in skateboarding and life yeah so when i teach Facts. these kids you know some of these things i'm showing about skating they might be able to take it over here maybe right. with their this kid he grows up and he likes baseball cool follow your heart you know yeah. but take these same tools and they're gonna they're gonna pay for yeah. it you know yeah it, it'll definitely move you forward in some way the last thing i want to ask is like on your skate part mm -hmm. so i know like you could do like street stuff but you are also extremely good at doing a lot of transition mm -hmm. is your part going to be like a mixture i think so um i grew up street skating it actually wasn't until i came to venice that i learned transition really yeah because okay. the park is like so you, much you look so natural on it it seemed like that came first wow yeah i wish it i wish it did you know what i mean actually now i came from like wow. switch healing stair sets and you know what i mean Sick. like doing a bunch of different tricks down things and ledge grinds and stuff before yeah. i even got in the transition but now that i have the tools that i have gained i'm able to pursue whatever i want yeah you know i got the the place like Venice Skate Park to learn all the transition I really need. Yeah. And a little street section to maintain my street. So I think that's going to be the surprise for you when you so, see the street part, what it's actually yeah. going to be. Hell yeah, man. Let people know where they can find you. You can find me on Instagram at Rochi Official. Um, or you can find me shredding it up at Venice Skate Park. So if you're ever you're out at Venice often? Skate Park. Yeah, I'm there every a.m. You so, know what damn, I mean? Yeah. yeah, every morning. So I make sure I get my training in. Yeah. Grab the coffee, straight to the park, and I'm training. And Sick. then when I'm done, I'm doing a bunch of other menial tasks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Thank thanks you. for coming through. Thank you guys for watching. We'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace. Peace out.